Hey, this is going to be my ultimate guide to getting unstuck. Well, how do you know if you're stuck watching out there? Well, good sign that you're stuck if your shot pattern is high push or block. So that's a push with a bit of slice spin and then sometimes snapping the hook off. So a little bit of left, right, left, right too wide for you to shoot really good scores. If you just bring it in a little bit to where those rights and lefts didn't get you in trouble, you'd be in great shape. You do that by watching this video. I'm going to show you all the different facets that will help you get yourself unstuck. Stay tuned. Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. I continue on my journey to hit the ball longer and straighter than I ever have before. I would love to take you along with me. Okay, so first of all, let's define what stuck means. In this case, there, there's probably other ways you can be stuck or define what stuck is, I suppose, but we're going to call this being handle stuck or, in other words, if you're arriving here with the club trapped pointing out to right field. This is where everybody on TV wants to be, somewhere where the club is parallel to the intended line of flight. In other words, the laser beam coming out of your club points right to your target. So I would define stuck, and it's complicated, we'll go over it, but if you're way in here like this at last parallel, it's a really good chance that you're going to come into that ball this way and have to do some kind of flipping action. You don't get the response. You get those high marshmallowy puffball drives that just kind of bite, kind of maybe go sideways into the right rough and don't go very far. You know you're not hitting it as far as you should be. It doesn't feel right off the face. It doesn't feel solid. Then you get this occasional super hot hook. So that is defined by this happens causes that a lot of the time when your club is pointing way to the right at last parallel now we've got to be careful here you can have a little bit of this and not be stuck at all it's contingent the club being here is contingent on having a neutral path a neutral club path the club comes down and at the moment of impact when it's striking the ball it's moving directly at your target so you can be inside a little bit. You can be inside to out a few degrees and not be stuck. And in that case, having the club just slightly off to the right at last parallel is actually really good. Again, this is fine if your path is inside out a little bit. In other words, what if I just set up to the right and I made a really good swing? Say I wouldn't be stuck. It just means the club is moving inside to out. And conversely, you could be here, and that just means you're in good shape if your path is a bit outside to in. So, leads you to a trap. You could have the club dead straight and be stuck. So if your club was dead straight like this, at last parallel, but your club was outside in, your path was outside in, it means you're probably a little bit stuck. If you're outside in, you'd really like the club to be to match that and be slightly outside the handle at last parallel here. We're after a response. We're after the head of the club coming around on time to square up with the, fa the face being square to your target and catching up to the left arm on time. Stuck looks like this looks like this you can see my arm is moving away instead of coming back in the handle is getting pushed to right field deep into the swing this is going to cause a lot of those blocks that a lot of people hit so let's use that as our loose definition other people might define stuck being the arms stuck behind the body we're going to cover that a little bit too if your arms are stuck behind the body, there's a really good chance that the club is going to be lining up way out to right field too. So they're kind of in the same family. 
but I can understand if somebody else is defining stuck as not getting the arms back in front of the body again. I think this is all the same arm, the arms of the same beast, you might have, uh, say. So let's get started with a few of the fixes that you should try if you are stuck and going high right and snap hooking. Okay, the first facet to think about here, how to get unstuck. Remember that you're starting, hopefully you're starting out with around 30 degrees of bend forward at the hips. And this is gonna cover a big percentage of people who are getting stuck is that they simply do not maintain this 30, even 35 degrees. Colin Marakawa might even be closer to 40 degrees. But if you are tall in your downswing, it's almost impossible to get the club to line up. You could be like Scotty Scheffler and be a little bit on the tall side, 25 degrees, and he maintains that, but he maintains it the whole swing. He doesn't lose any of that. See, I see a lot of people, a lot of my students, they might start pretty good, looking at like this at about 30. And by the time they get down, back down to the ball again, it looks like this and this angle right here starts to approach zero. It might be 10 degrees or 12 degrees, 15 degrees. But the straightening up of the body is going to cause the, the thigh and the hip and the knee to occupy the space where this handle needs to go. Remember that the handle of the club needs to start turning left right about the time it reaches the right pocket of the right hip. It needs to be doing this, coming back to the left again. Now, how can you do that if your shoulders are now back and they're not over your toes anymore? Let's say your pelvis is in, your head is up and back, you stand up. Well, now all of a sudden, my hip, my thigh are now occupying that space. I'm going to have to route out around it. And that's when I get the handle going to the right for too long in the downswing. And the club's just going to respond by tucking in behind. It doesn't matter what kind of machinations you make with your wrists. The overlying forces are now wanting that club to line up with the handle and be in the stuck position. So this, and of course, you can see in this position how my right elbow and arm, you would say, also say is stuck. So if that's the look you have, first thing you could try is, try my chair drill. A lot of versions of this though. You can put your bag back here. And you'd simply just want to hit some pitch shots and stay on the wall even better if you could take your left butt cheek and push the wall up in the air push the chair up in the air like this actually thereby increasing the moment of bow something like this just pitch shots again You'll see, especially do this in conjunction with the next tip I'm going to give you. You can get yourself unstuck pretty quick just with these two things. So again, when you keep your bow, this space right here where we need the handle to come, come around the corner, is going to be preserved. Think of it this way. If you were to bow as far as you could, you see this, your arms would never get stuck behind you. Look at this. My arms, even at the top of the swing, my arms are still in front of my body. They never get behind my body. And so they just easily fall right back. Look, I can't get my right elbow behind anymore. So that's the extreme version. Make sure that you just keep the forward bow. Of course, keep it throughout the back swing. Lift that chair up in the air, going through. 
maintain that amount of flexion at the hip and you'll start becoming unstuck pretty quickly. Now when you can combine that bow or the maintenance of this hip flexion throughout impact and you combine that with this tip which is got to make sure the club handle exits around in an arc around the corner like that once you can do that you really start to see the shaft the head of the club getting kicked to the outside it's really pretty to see it line up when you got this going right so we're gonna go lift the chair and exit low and left around the corner to a lot of you out there it'll feel like you're hitting a pull you're pulling it almost way out to in so something like this nearly dead straight right at the target it probably cut in from the left one yard but that finished right on target super square shot looking at that in the replay you can really see club head and the shaft was not stuck at all but really getting a good some people call it a tumble to the outside of the hands we're getting this response here to get the club head to square up get hit square uh, you get more compression on it and better control of the club face now while we have the camera set up at this angle let's consider one more thing got to remember if you are looking like this a lot on the way down and you're hitting that block it's a really good chance over the years you've built in some toe flip this is the counter this is like the short term quick fix counter see how I'm stuck here and I'm gonna roll the toe over like this in order to play my inside out draw which most people who are stuck when they do hit a really straight shot it tends to be a nice draw which is great but it just doesn't happen enough of the time to be consistent and repeatable predictable Chances are the first time you do this exercise I've just showed you. Lift the chair. You can even get an early head start on that by doing a double butt cheek moment. Maintain it and turn the wheel around to the left, maintaining this leg off the ground. And when you combine that with this nice, neat, around the corner exit of the handle, you're going to have so much more squaring force is what I would call it. The club is so much easier to get square from the extra kind of what you might call passive squaring force now introduced into the system. You're probably going to realize in a second you've been rolling the toe a little bit all along. So you're going to think that you're pulling it with an outside in path, but it's not. The path is straighter than it used to be, but still not outside in. But your face will be closed and you'll hit pull hooks. You'll say, well, Steve is an idiot. This drill just made me pull it. This is where you get into changing the release action. It can't look like this. It can't look like that at this point. Once you have all this squaring force in the system, Got to release it like this, almost with the face up to the sky. Feels like your right forearm passes almost under. Now, look at this club face. Looks open, but it's square to the arc. Now, you see my forearms. There doesn't appear to be a crossover here. This is where people get confused. If you were to look at this same position from the face on view, it would look like I'm doing that. It would look like I've crossed my arms over, but it's an optical illusion. 
I'm flapping around the arc with the face square to that arc. So it is the most consistent, predictable club face we can probably get swinging on a circle that's at an incline of, on a 9-iron, maybe 60 degrees tall instead of 90. The only way that you could say that timing would never come into a golf swing is if you could figure out how to swing like a Ferris wheel. Then the club face always stays on line and we could consistently hit it straight. So people who bring up timing all the time, of course, you've got a club face that's only square to your target for an instant. The point of this is to make the errors, because we all make errors. We make our, get a little quick, our brain farts sometimes. But when we make an error in club face, if you can get it wheeling like this, it'll be smaller. It'll be an error small enough to keep the ball in play so that you don't miss it in some really bad spots left and right. If you can keep that covered, because your error in club face or your dispersion left to right is tighter, then you'll be all better for it. All right, here we are back down the line again to show you one more point. It's going to be often overlooked by a lot of people. Here's Steve's rule of thumb. Let me give you Steve's general wisdom. I got a kind of a, a loose rule. A lot of people talk about the arms. A lot of other instructors, oh, your arms are getting stuck. You got to make your arms do this. Got to make your arms do this. The arms will generally go wherever your torso goes. Your arms are connected. If you just, look at this, if I spin, my arms start to come out the faster I spin. My arms tend to kind of follow along with whatever my torso is doing, unless you're really manipulating them somehow, which means get the torso right and your arm path will generally, almost every time, be pretty good. So here's another error people make when they get stuck. A lot of people, and this kind of goes with their effort to get either on the inside or hit up on the ball with the driver more, you can get yourself stuck this way. If I were to make too flat of a turn, you know, see, I have little tilt and I have a lot of hip turn here. You see how far my left butt cheek has come off the chair and orbited around in a flat merry-go-round manner and so have my shoulders. Well, of course the arms are going to want to be here and get way behind you. So already you're looking pretty stuck. What would I have to do to get the ball, the arms back in front again? I would have to do a, an equal and opposite move like this, a big roundhouse, you know, like a figure eight move I would have to make to get the arms back down or I could just manipulate like I said you can manipulate the arms so here I go the main root cause here is flat backswing the arms will tend to go way here now I can lift them hey look at my arms are back in front of my body again but I have a swing that's incredibly vertical and leftwards it's kind of your typical over-the-top loop and that verticality it's not going to allow the club face to square up very easily either so if you're looking to do that now again you might even see the club shaft in this position but when it's outside in remember it's still stuck if it's in this position so you're still stuck now you're more vertical and your slice on the big clubs is really going to be accentuated so those are the really are the only two solutions to deal with this issue here. Now there's one more, I suppose, and that would be, here's the same root. I'm gonna turn very horizontally, and I'm gonna separate my arms to fool the camera here. So now this measurement here is tripled in size. Hey, but look, my, my club is on the plane, right? But now the arms are no longer following what your body is doing. You're gonna have to just two separate completely different wheels that you're swinging on that are, are never you're never going to make them consistent so the fix here and again you can see if i were to add more tilt to this wheel now watch this club's angle here there's a flat turn see my arms going behind me and the club is nearly horizontal but if i can swing this thing more 
this way. Now in this swing, you can see I'm tilting as much as I'm turning. My left butt cheek, this is maybe the key if you were to do an exercise like this on the wall at home, my left butt cheek is staying at home a lot more. Here, it orbits way off the wall. Now I've got to put that back somehow, which is unlikely. Most people who spin this way shift this way. And they're really stuck and really inside and really blocky and hooky. But if I can keep my left butt cheek at home and feel like my shoulders wind up more like a Ferris wheel than a merry-go-round this way. Now look at this club. It's got more tilt and less turn. And the effect is that it's keeping my arms from getting too far behind me as I make my backswing. So if they're less behind me, it'll be a very simple thing. If I can simply combine that with the first two tips, here's more tilt, less turn. Lift the chair, go around to the left. Your arms will be completely unstuck at this point. It'll be very unlikely that you would see the club looking like this. You're gonna see the club look kind of tipping to the outside right at this point. And that's when you're really going to hit it long and straight. All right, let's look at one additional way that you can get stuck. It's really tough to fix. Hi, Elwin. This is for Elwin. This is just manipulating the arm path starting down. You could be in great shape here. Now, if you were to do something like this and drop way too far under the hand plane, call it the curve that you should have the handle moving on coming down. But let's say you're in good shape here and you're going to do something like this, like yank it down because somebody on YouTube told you this is how you get it to the inside and stop coming outside in and slicing, right? They want you to drop that handle. But remember Steve's first rule, the arms will tend to follow the body. If you just let them relax, let them respond to the turn of the body. So here you have the wheel. My first two examples here, you have the wheel got more incline and more tilt this way. You can still screw it up by trying to pull it like this, which a few people out there will still do. In that case, you really got to feel that the handle is going to come out a little bit first this way. You see the natural shallowing effect. Not only does my elbow drop in front of my pocket better, but now all of a sudden I'm not stuck anymore because the handle of the club is getting out this way far enough so that it can crack back on time to the left. If you drop under, imagine this line, if your handle drops under it, you can see the natural reaction is for the shaft to stand up. You'd have to put extra force to crank it this way in this case. But let's say the handle goes down. It means at some point, it can't just keep going down, you're going to hit your heel. So at some point, you're going to have to return back to that line again, because that's the line that's in a direct collision course with the ball. So if you're down, you have to come out late, and there's our pattern again. A lot of people will do this. In fact, they will do a couple of these things. They will lose the angle and drop it down. Now, not only do I have to go out anyway to get to the ball, but now effectively my thigh, my knee are in the way where I really need this handle to go and I have to route it out and around. So now I'm really in this position. It won't matter how much exit low left after this. The exit will look great, but you're always going to be behind the curve because you're not going to catch up with being square on time. Your club handle stays, laser beam, simply stays pointing in right field just a little bit too long. You can crack it around to the left and you'll still be in a bit of a blocky position. So remember that rule, 
that the laser beam needs to start pointing to left field by the time that club reaches your pocket. All right, just so to summarize, you want to get unstuck. Great way to do that is keep the bow of your hips throughout the, the downswing. Number two, make sure you have enough tilt to the shoulders and hips to match the turn. If you have overly turned, you're going to be probably getting in some trouble. Number three, make sure that you remember that the club is an arc, which means it has to exit around to the left. Remember that it's on a circle. We're just hitting on a tangent to that circle, which we'd call the swing plane. And number four, make sure that you allow the arms to relax a little bit so that they kind of just respond to your torso. You don't want to manipulate the arms. It means that your torso is probably off if you're trying to manipulate the arms. Go back and address the bow and the tilt. You'll be able to get unstuck. So let's see if I can put those things together here. Let's look at that one in slow motion. You can really see how the club is. Doesn't look like this, but instead it resists dropping under my right forearm where it would get stuck, but instead shallows. But then as the handle starts to curve, it resists dropping anymore and starts to tip out or tumble, as other teachers would say, this way on time. So I can come into this thing square, don't have to manipulate the face to get it square and I can hit it probably with more compression, better low point control, of course face dispersion much much tighter. So you want to play with these ideas, you know if you fit, like to film yourself check for a deficit in any one of these areas. Do you turn too flat? Do you stand up? Do you exit? to right field or even center field with your handle. You want to check all these things out. These are the, the reasons that the club head is getting trapped behind the handle for too long coming into the ball. Now, if you have any questions or you have any comments on this, please feel to leave them down below. I'll answer any questions that are, you know, honest and straightforward. Thanks so much for watching this. I really hope it helps get a few people out there unstuck and getting their on, the, on their way to hitting long and straight. I'm Steve. Check out my website, hititlonger.com. And if I don't see you in the next video, I will see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Everybody take good care.